This is Mike Longo in the Quantum Cave, and to my right is Mr. Glenn Kwasny. And today we're going to talk about the new 52. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, Glenn, for those who don't know, what is the new 52? Okay. Uh, back in September of 2011, DC Comics made the <laughs> brilliant decision to cancel all their books and restart all of them with issue number one. Uh, and they weren't all the same titles. The basic guys were there. Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman. But then they threw in some other odd things. Uh, it's kind of interesting how, uh, wh how, you know, how they, what they chose to do use and what they chose not to use. Um, and there's been a lot of, a lot of people online, of course, a lot of chat about it. Anybody who's interested in comics knows about this, of course. It's big. This is a big thing for them to do. What I've been seeing is people saying either that, uh, they're going to give it a chance, you know, they're going to see if the writers are going to write good stories. It's still basically the same characters, so they're going to give it a shot. And then there's a lot of other people who are like, oh, no way, this is terrible. Um, so they're basically going to start everything all over again. Right. From from day one. Exactly. It's day one of this, this, this character. Correct. For all of them. Right. It's like, it's like the characters are still the same iconic characters. Their costumes have been changed. And now their backstory and history and all that is going to be changed, but it'll still be in line. It'll, you know, Superman still comes from the planet Krypton and all that stuff, and still grows up in Smallville with Mon Pa Kent. Um, they're just going to redo it for a new, you know, for the new century. Um, you know, as if instead of landing here in 1938 or something, he landed here. I don't know what they're going with because I haven't read any of them yet. <laughs> 1980 or something. Yeah, exactly. They're going back to a certain point, and and uh, I'm kind of intrigued. There's one title I'd be kind of like to read. Um, they're doing stories of a younger Superman, uh, and the pictures they showed of him, he's like wearing blue jeans and stuff, and uh, that always was an idea that, that I've been interested in that since the 70s. When I used to draw, try and make up comic characters, I would put them in like army boots, real laced up army boots and things like that. I always thought that would that would be more realistic. It would bring some realism to comics. And that seems to be a little bit of what they're doing with that character. But it's they've launched two Superman comics at the same time. One of them is the younger Superman when he's first starting out and the other is an older Superman now that he's been around for a while and he's got a full on I don't know what you'd call it, superhero uniform. The present day Superman. Yeah, he's like, this is the present day Superman, and people know him and now accept him as a superhero. Right, so you can get both stories. Exactly, young and, and exactly. Right. Yeah, and I always find the, the young guys just starting out a little more interesting. <laughs> yeah, they're discovering <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, who they are and how they're going to fit into society and everything. Uh -huh. So that, that's interesting stuff. So I would like to read those. I've been holding off on reading all those because I'm still trying to catch up on... The old universe. <laughs> you know? well, okay, so now as far as the old universe goes, it never happened? Well, that's it exactly. See, and that's part of what has been... <laughs> it's been kind of bugging me because people are going like, I can't believe they did this. Da -da -da. You know, they changed everything and, and it's either it's ruined or, oh, come on, it's, it's fine, blah, blah, blah. And it seems what a lot of people in their enthusiasm for the characters, they forget that they are characters. This is all fiction. None of it really exists. And a few people have said, oh, I don't think this is going to work. And when it fails, they'll bring back the old characters. So at least that fan was approaching it in the realistic way that uh, these are characters. This universe doesn't really exist. They can change it anytime they want. They can go back to the old stuff that they want. But something I haven't heard anybody say, and it's been in my mind, is that uh, over the past few decades, uh, DC's rebooted several times. Um, the first big time they did it was the Crisis on Infinite Earths, where they destroyed all the parallel universes and had them all compacted into just one universe that was supposed to be it. No more parallel universes. Now hold it right there. Yeah. So there were parallel universes because they were already changing things. Exactly. Um, yeah, I guess I, for people who don't know, um, back in God, it was the early 60s or something like that, um, they had a story, uh, Flash of Two Worlds, where the modern Flash, Barry Allen, what a lot of fans called the Silver Age Flash, by vibrating at a certain frequency wound up on another earth that occupies the same space and time as the current earth as as his earth i should say 
but it's a different earth and there's different people living on it and everything but a lot of the people are similar and so that world has a flash but he's an older flash and he's the one that most people would have would call the golden age flash the one that came out in the 40s uh which is jay garrick so and it was it was a nice neat way of having the new flash meet the old flash and they could team up you know and, and have a, an adventure together and I'm sure at the time it was a one-shot story and nobody thought anything of it, but it did well. And so, of course, they started doing it again. And then, of course, they had the Silver Age Green Lantern meet the Golden Age Green Lantern. And they had the Silver Age Superman meet the Golden Age Superman. And they kept yeah. doing it and doing it and doing it until they were having uh, annual crossovers in the Justice League of America. They would every year they would have an... Uh, was it every year or every couple of years? I, I'd have to go back and look them up. But they would have, uh, like... Uh, Crisis on Earth 2. And they start, it's funny too because the world that Barry Allen was on, the supposedly current comic book DC universe, was referred to as Earth 1. Oh boy. Which, you know, really doesn't make sense because if those were the Golden Age characters on the other Earth, they were first. So they should actually have been Earth 1. Uh, yeah, and, oh, and you say, oh boy, because uh, you can see yeah, why this see, is... I'm totally getting confused already. I'm like, okay, Earth yeah. 1, Earth 2, and right. there's so many of these parallel Earths, then they finally combine them into one, but these... Yeah, yeah they got to where they had Earth X, and Earth this, and Earth that. Oh, wow. They had one Earth where, uh, back in the 50s, uh, the Quality comic book heroes, there was a company called Quality, and it put out a line of, of comic books, uh, the Human Bomb and, and Condor, the Black Condor and things like that, uh, the Ray. Um, and those characters, you know, weren't around anymore, and they got put on the market. Uh, I guess Quality's um, properties were put up for sale, and DC bought them. So DC owned all these characters, and they decided, well, let's use them, you know. So they created an, a parallel Earth where the Quality heroes existed, but they decided to make it a... Um, there's there's novels that people write now where they go, what if this had happened instead of that back in this period, you know? Right, right. And so that's what DC did. They decided, okay, on this parallel Earth where the quality heroes are, uh, the Nazis won World War II. Yeah. So now the world is enslaved by Nazis, and there's this rebel band that's, you know, fighting back. They're the only ones left to fight back, and it's it's these quality superheroes. You know, they've gotten together into a group, you know, and they're fighting the Nazis. And this was done, of course, as one of these Justice League of America stories where it was instead of Crisis on Earth 2, where Earth 1 and Earth 2 characters crossed over, they had, and oh, and I should point out for people who don't know, that before there was a Justice League of America... Back in the golden age of comics, there was the Justice Society of America. So when they have their annual crossover, whatever it is, they um, Justice League of America teams up with the Justice Society of America, and they have they have their adventures. Okay. Okay. So now talk about getting messy. Now they have the Justice League of America and the Justice Society of America go to this other parallel universe where the quality heroes are. So just imagine all the characters that you have to keep track of. You know. <laughs> Wow, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it kind of got to be that way. I mean, the stories were enjoyable and everything, but you were kind of glad that they didn't happen every day. You know? <laughs> but then they started happening every day. I mean, they started having this crossover and that crossover, and, and it got confusing because they had a comic book called The Brave and the Bold. And I remember reading a story in The Brave and the Bold once where they had uh, Wildcat team up with Batman. And I believe it was Neil Adams' artwork. And... At the time that I read it, I read it when it first came out on the stands, and it confused me a little bit, because in my head, Wildcat, member of the Justice Society of America, Earth 2. The Batman they showed with the yellow emblem, uh, the yellow background behind his black bat emblem, and the yellow belt with the little cylinders on it, that back then the old u utility belt, mm -hmm. that's the Earth 1 Batman. You know, and he's, and he's a young guy, whereas... Earth 2 Batman, older guy, graying at the temples and so forth. Well, in this Brave and the Bold story, they had a young Batman wearing the Earth 1 Batman uniform team up with Wildcat, looking exactly like Wildcat from Earth 2. And nowhere in the story did they feel the ne necessary to explain who this guy was. Was he an Earth 1 version of Wildcat? You know, because they had shown that there are two Green Lanterns, two Flashes, two Wonder Woman on, on these two planets. So they very easily could have been an Earth-1 Wildcat, but they never said anything about it. Mm -hmm. And because of the age difference and the 
references within the story, I kind of felt like this is the Earth 2 Wildcat. Or was he? You know, and that just kind of you see, and that's that's the kind of thing that happens. And that would happen with all the characters. Yeah, occasionally, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of well, writers, you know, writers are writers, and they just write. They think, oh, this would be an interesting story. They write it. Uh, they probably don't sit down and and go through all the past issues. And you know, uh, you know, there are a few who have brilliant memories and can remember all this stuff. But some of them just go ahead and write the story they want to write, and then yeah. you know see how it fits it's kind of yeah it's kind of up to editors to keep track of that stuff and sometimes they don't bother or, or they just don't know so so that's just an example of where a fan reading could go hey you know what what is this what's going on 